got to be able to pre yep, yes, in the season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, all on suffering and doctrine. And that's the wildest thing. Father, bless tonight. We thank you for asking you to uh, just be with us this evening. And thank you for all the traveling mercies, Lord, that you blessed us with. I pray you touch our hearts, Lord. Pray the scripture be clear to understanding. And uh, again, thank you for the liberty, the opportunity to be in a church house on a, on a midweek service like uh, you've, you've allowed us to be in. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Romans chapter 1. All right, so one of my, uh, if you're reading the Bible, you have like, uh, have you ever heard of uh, uh, life verses, right? Life verse. So your life verse would be that uh, after you get saved, shortly uh, after that, you kind of, you got, you got uh, a verse that pops out. My life verse is uh, actually like three of them. It's uh, Jeremiah chapter chapter three, eleven through thirteen. But in addition to that, what I've what I've learned was, you know, there are chapters that stick out in your Bible. So like Proverbs chapter one is a big one for me. Uh, Romans chapter one is a is a good one, and you know you get First uh, Thessalonians maybe four, and uh, actually Galatians three is another one. So those are chapters, whole chapters of yeah favorite verses. Yeah, you got favorite chapters. Yeah, got I got a favorite book. Say what's that? King James Bible. It's the Holy Bible. When the Amen. King James Bible came out, it wasn't called the King James Version. That term version came later. So when they when they wanted to add another, they wanted to revise that one. So they called it the revised version. And so when that King James Bible was put out, it was called the Holy Bible. It uh, and and so since those guys said, uh, well, we have a revised version. It was later that they looked back on the King James and said, well, the King James is just a version. So that's where you're. That's where your King KJV comes from. If you if you really understand without, you know, God knows what you mean when you say KJV. We would never split hairs. I've used KJV, but I've changed my references. If I post something from KJV to AV 1611, of course, then you get the Dota birds. They say, well, you really don't have a, a, a 1611. You got a you got an 18 whatever and these different editions and stuff. No, I got a King J. Like the question, I guess, would be, so where is the Word of God today? And I would tell you, I got it in my hand. And then you want to tell me and argue the fact that, uh, you know, it's, it's not that, it's this. And what these individuals say, that there is no real Word of God today, and they'll take you back to a group of manuscripts they can't read or don't have. There are no originals that you have, and that's why when you talk to certain Christians, you if you just listen to what they say, and understand what they're saying, then you'll realize whether or not you've got the right group of people or not. And uh, I, I'll sit down with you and talk with you. And then I'll listen. You'll say some of the bizarre stuff. You say, yeah, but uh, this ESV is closest to the originals. The ESV, English Standard Version. Okay. The what did you say? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear you. I almost threw up in my mouth. But, but what did you say about the ESV? It's that we love it because it's closest to the originals. And the reality of what Christians do now, that you don't even know what you're saying. You just know that, you know, and that's that's a sign of being lazy, by the way. So we would tell the fellas at the men's home, don't don't come out of here and say, well, Brother Kyle said. Oh, we believe what, what because uh, matter of fact, this, this Tuesday, I think it was, Brother Kyle and I had an opportunity. We were there for an extra hour or so. We just sat there, had fellowship with him. And they just started rattling off all these questions. And uh, I like that. I, it's great. And, and really what that does for me, it reminds me that not everybody knows what you know. And you got to be very careful because you assume, you can rather assume that because people have a Bible or they sit here or they're part of your church, they, of course they know what you know. Well, there are a lot of circumstances that led to what you know. And they may not have gotten through that yet or, or, or haven't got to that point yet. So you gotta you gotta be mindful of the fact that that there are certain sections of this this walk that we have that that not everybody's on the same page yet. That doesn't mean we're not going the same direction. So just like I would tell you as a Bible believer, you you would want to say that well there are a lot of things that I don't agree with, don't understand per se. 
But that doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong because I don't understand or I don't agree. Would you agree with that? Just because you don't understand something, does that mean it's wrong then? No, because you just simply might not understand. Oh, God forbid you don't agree with what this guy's saying. Well, why would that mean it's automatically wrong? You should try the spirits. You should prove all things. You should examine yourself. Uh, you should try those things because there is the truth. And the Bible says, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. And uh, it's not a truth. It's truth. This is it. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ isn't a truth. And so this guy, while we were out there at the men's home, he kept saying, what do you believe? Is that what you believe? And we got into aliens and all sorts of wild stuff. I, I said, let me help you with your terminology because it doesn't matter what we believe. So I want to change what we believe or the perception of what we believe matters to what did God say? And so as a Christian, you need to get, get used to figuring out what God said. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what that preacher says. What did God say? And so today what you got is this weird deal, and everybody's got a particular perspective or perception or version. Your story, his story, and somewhere in the middle is the truth type stuff. And so they say, well, the ESV is closest to the original. And I'd ask the individual, being polite in that respect, I said, you've ever seen the original? What do you say? The original. The piece of paper that Moses wrote on? And see, they don't even know when you say that, which is what they mean. They don't know does that, that, that what they said. They don't, they don't understand because they they're very shallow. They have very little faith. There's nothing there to, 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 to root and ground them. Your ability to be able to root, be rooted and grounded is your faith. And your faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, O ye of little faith. And so, you know, we're talking, having a good time. I enjoy talking Bible with people. I enjoy talking with you if you want to. That's why I come to church because most of the time out of church, you, you're talking, you ain't talking Bible. Now at your house, you should. Shouldn't that be a haven there? Shouldn't that be a place where it might not be that, you know, it's at the workspace so much, maybe on your break, right? There's nothing wrong. You still live in America, by the way. You do still have a, a, you know, a freedom of speech type stuff. I would tell you the reason why you're losing that is because you as a Christian who has something to say, don't you? You ain't saying it. So the Lord's like, okay, well, what the heck, man? I gave you an open door. You have the liberty to be able to tell your neighbor, would you like to come and church? Or would you like to say, you know, pass, give him a try. If you don't know what to say, give him a try. Or tell somebody what Jesus Christ did for you. But they're not doing that. Do that and get used to it and get comfortable talking about Jesus Christ. Look at uh, verse 16, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Paul says that because apparently there are people that are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed. I like to say that I'm not ashamed, but I, I feel that way sometimes because of my lack of faith. And it would be like, uh, I think it was today or yesterday. It's probably yesterday because I don't have a car. All right, so I did have the vehicle yesterday. So I did my rounds. I did what I did. I gassed it up, got it washed up, I cleaned it and all that. And I was at Walmart getting some stuff. And then I had a handful of tracks. And I'm like, you, uh, you got three, four, five people that you're going to run, walk past, look them in the eye as you get into the door, before you get into the door. And I'm like, you, I ain't got time for that guy. I don't feel like stopping. He don't want it anyway. So I'll just hide the truth from him and let him go to hell and figure it out himself. Or let him figure it out himself. And then, you know, if he goes to hell, that's on him. You say, well, I would, I would never think that way about people. Well, what are you doing about it? So I do, this is my little rule of thumb. You do yours. This is my, uh, this is my uh, conviction, right? So you do error teaching for doctrine, the commandments of man. So we might have things that we do that isn't specifically doctrine, but it's biblical in nature, and it'll be my conviction. And that's what I do, my wife and I do. But I wouldn't teach from the pulpit if, if you're not doing whatever my convictions are, 
then you're not saved or you're not doing right. Holidays are bad at that. People, are, Christians are bad at that with the holiday type thing, and they say, Bible, you know, they say, well, we don't celebrate this holiday and that holiday. First of all, there are no holidays in the New Testament. So whatever you decide to do, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So if you want to you want to celebrate Christmas. Now, you and I both know there is no Christ Mass. That's a Roman Catholic holiday. It's full of pagan traditions. But there's nothing in the Bible. There are no holidays in the Bible. Some Christians would be like, well, we don't celebrate Christmas because that's a pagan holiday. I say, well, how come the other day you invited me to your house? What do you mean? And you had birthday cake. What was that? And they're like, what are you talking about? I said, well, Christmas ain't in your Bible, but birthdays are. And they don't know that. Huh? Well, there's two birthdays in your Bible. One for Pharaoh and one for Herod. Do you know what happened on both those days? Somebody died on them days. See, it's the, the just, just what I would guard, I would tell you, man. Look, don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Know what you're talking about, though. And uh, start simple. Start just talking to people about what God did for you. And practice and giving people tracks. And here's a good one. Invite them to church, right? Why not? Hey, would you like to go to church? Blank you. Okay. Would you like to go? And and just do that. I mean, you know, I, I don't think we, we're in danger of being put at the stake. Not yet. I hope not. I don't see with, with what's coming, the last days. You ever, you ever read the characteristics of the last days? Know this also perilous times? Look at First Corinthians or Second. Thessalonians chapter 3. Say, well, I thought we were in Romans chapter 1. We're Americans. We're going to chapter 2 Timothy 3 now. now. I might be back. I'll be back. Key is, let's, get, let's put ourselves in a position where we hear the word of God being taught right. He said, well, how do we trust you? Will you read then? That's why. You don't have to worry about fellas that tell you to read the Bible all the time, right? You better thank God you got a crew in here that says, hey, you better show up. You should show up to church. You got to watch out for them birds that are telling you don't show up unless I'm there. Oh, don't, don't let me let, let me be the one to read the Bible to you. That would be what the priest used to tell us. Man, we, we'd go crazy reading the Bible. Well, after I got saved as a Roman Catholic and started reading the Bible, no, no wonder he didn't want me reading that. Hey, Amen. There's one God and one mediator between God and man. St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Mary, you know, that, that. No, uh, the man Christ Jesus, right? It's one God. Anyway, uh, let's see. So we're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. He says, No, also then the last days perilous times shall come. And watch the characteristics here. The moon will turn to blood, earthquakes, uh, uh, the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, violence, uh, Democrats running everything, right? And then that's how they interpret that. But I'll show you something interesting. The, 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 the end days are, are going to be... Uh, the perilous times and the characteristics thereof, you can go ahead and cross-reference that to the five I wills in Isaiah chapter 14. I'll tell you what the, la the characteristic of the last days are. Ready? Do what thy will should be the whole of the law. You say, oh, we're not like that. Yeah, you are. You do it every day. You, you, God tells you something, you say, like, you pretend like you don't hear it. And God tells you to do something and you, you don't do it. And then you cherry pick stuff with God, and that's the characteristics of the last days. You say, well, you're reaching with that because look at all, man. You're getting a little a little chip in people's hands already. You got all that in the credit cards. Yeah, but, but he ain't mentioning here. He's going to tell you, and what he's going to show you is the condition of the church, and that's what you need to pay attention to. Here, watch this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Don't worry about the things in the world. Got to take care of the things of the world, correct? Well, I know the I know the name of the Antichrist. God didn't ask you to have to study. You is your wife in church? Are your kids in church? Are your kids saved? Is your neighbor? Worry about that. See, worry about the study. And, and I'll tell you what, man. It's uh, there's a lot to worry about. I think I think you overthink yourself. There's a lot to pursue. There are a lot of causes. I think you over you you, you doing more than than what you should be doing. And just master the few things God gave you. He said, you were faithful in a few things. The few things that I gave you, you feel overwhelmed because you got, you got too many pans on the fire. What is that term? Too many fires in the pan or something like that. Too many chiefs in the island. Too many Indians. Yeah, I don't know, man. You're scatterbrained, man. What you doing? The road that you're on, the path, it's broad, right? 
Got you, man. Yeah, amen, brother. No, dude, it's straight, narrow. I like the straight and narrow. Why? Keeps me not having to worry so much. I got ADHD for sure, man. All that's chemical gummy bear stuff that you guys are taking. I mean, what you got, what's out there these days. I, I did that. You know, everybody said, oh, it's legal now. Is it? So I running over them fences and stuff and all that and be pushing the back of that car. That, so, so, so now we're all right with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're broad-minded. We're all that. Uh, we just do it for uh, medicinal purposes. Purposes help our eye by our glaucoma. You go kid your grandmother about all that stuff, bro. I know where that stuff did. I know where it led. And before that gets old, them gun bears will get old. Oh, 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 oh they could get old because you just fall asleep all the time and you eating all them donuts, pouring butter, some, uh, margarine all over it, some butter stuff, and dousing in chocolate. <laughs> anyway, that's what I heard they did. I don't know. All right, look. So verse three. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And here we go. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. So the first characteristic, you say, well, how do we know, Pastor? We got all this time. We can just continue to do what we want to do what we want to do. And we got plenty of time. Well, one of the characteristics of these perilous times is the fact that men are lovers of their own selves. So that's the me first stuff. That's, that's Isaiah chapter 14. I will, I will, I five times. It's the I will, me first, I am. You watch the Marvel movies, and every one of them bad guys will say, I am, and they don't go, whoop, whoop. I am, I am inevitable. You know, that one dude, the purple guy. I am, I am, I am. Everybody just, whoo, like one of them little dogs in the back of the car. And you can tell, man, yeah, I, I know what it is. And you are too. You'll be as gods, and you'll make the shots, and you're supposed to be a servant, and you're bought with a price. So look what else it starts talking about. You say, well, that's talking about lost people. That, this context here is not lost people. It's the church. Paul's addressing the church, Christians. It ain't unsaved people. Look, God spends very little time worrying about unsaved people. This Bible's written to his people. He's, he's writing to people that can hear him. Why would he waste time talking about thee? He said, I never knew you. Who are you? But you know me, and I know you. John chapter 10, I know your name. He's talking about you. And now the devil will be the one to convince you that these words aren't applicable to you, and we got to always revise it. And uh, we, we, we put our trust in something that doesn't exist. You know, we, we're, we all believe the Bible. You can't, you can't just accept the fact somebody says, I believe the Bible. Like, which one? There's like 300 of them out there. Which one are you talking about? And they'll give you one, every, a crew like this is a good size for Wednesday. Uh, she'll have her ESV, New King James Version, your NIV, Revised Version, American Standard, New, new Revised Version, New World Translation, New King, all that new, all that stuff, man. And what did God say out of all that? Did he say Matthew 18, 11? Well, according to the ESV, it's not even in the Bible. It's not in that Bible. So, so, so did he not? Jesus came to save, the, seek and save them which were lost? It's in my Bible. That tells me why Jesus Christ comes. Your Bible says, hey, we got to take that out. And then, sadly, they, they lie about the numbering systems. You know why them, this King James Bible has a chapter and verse format on this thing like he does? And that's why all those new Bibles copy that. So that they make you think that that Bible is just like this Bible. Well, it don't take you long to find out that it's not. Matter of fact, let's just use a Calvinist phrase. This is a bi uh, it's not a biblical phrase. It's a biblical principle. You have a sovereign God, right? Okay, that means he's in charge. He's all powerful, all knowing right there. So in his, with his decree, he would tell you, give you the, 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 the means to be able to spot a counterfeit Bible in the first verse of every single Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven singular heaven and earth. Every single, including the New King James Bible, says that's plural. The heavens, plural. So you say, oh, this is the word of God too. Is it? Can I look? Let me just look at the first verse in your Bible. Oh, heavens, next. Amen. And the Spanish 1865, they come up here and say, it's just like you gringos and, and warning the gringos and you guys don't know and God, da, da, da. And I'm like, man, you guys, are, you guys were gringos that put this up. You're gringos that said that. And they don't want to hear that. You know, I, you want to know how you, you know if you're, you're interested in truth or not? Because when the truth is hard to swallow, you'll just be patient about it. 
and eat the elephant one day, day at a time, one bite at a time. So we say one day at a time. You want everything to change overnight, but you didn't get to the way you were at tonight overnight. And that goes true with your ability to be able to show up where you need to show up and do what you got to do. That didn't open, happen overnight. You didn't just become Mr. I'm going to win soul guy. I'm going to go walk in the hood or whatever, pass tracks out and stuff like that. You didn't turn into that guy overnight. That You, you were, couldn't imagine you were that guy. Becoming that guy. And then one day, there you are. You, you're out front of 24-7, whatever that. You're talking to individuals. And as the marijuana smoke's coming all up out of the car, you're making sure I ain't around. You go down, you know. Where, where, where'd he go? Where, bro? Where's old brother? Where, where'd Manny go, man? They're like, man, we're going to Vicky's. Verse 2, men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. We're going to go over that on Sunday if you show up. <laughs> what? We, we talked about the authority. We talked about the men. We talked about the women. We talked about the husbands. We talked about the wives and family thing like, right? Two shots a day. Two messages per topic. And now we're going to lead you into how to take care of little Johnny. The Bible talk about how to take care of little Johnny. Or Dr. Spock's going to do that. Remember Dr. Spock? That devil told everybody that God was a liar. And all you little kids, man, that all just running rampant. But we'll talk about and see what God has to say about it. And then again, you got to decide what God said. All right. I'm cool. I believe. Believe and know. Believe and know. Or know and believe. Know and believe. Believe and know. I know, I know a lot of this Bible, man. It's a lot more than I want to acknowledge. Why, Pastor? Why do you say that more than you not? Because I know me. I, I'm a sneaky, man. Like Jacob, we're always scheming and trying to do stuff. And Lord God, say, well, what, are you, what, what is that? What, what are you doing? What? A little bit don't hurt. Everybody else does it. I can always quit. <laughs> right? It says disobedient to parents. So that, that ain't applicable to the church, Christians? You don't have rebel, rebellious children? You No? No? You ever been in a Christian school, man? Okay, I just ask it questions. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady high miners, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Unsaved people, it is impossible for them to love God. Right? Is it? I love God, not without Jesus Christ, you know. Right, is that? Oh, we live in God, we trust, and you got the stinking one eye pyramid, satanic, Masonic, 666, well, serpent thing, but we're going to make America great again. Well, look at your symbol, dude. With that, that God, you sure? Just because they put a capital G on in God, we trust. That I bet it ain't. I bet it's, I bet it's a uh, lowercase. That ain't that guy. I promise you God ain't into that number 13 stuff that's all in the back of that dollar bill. Ain't in all that. And you got these guys spending all week long drawing pictures of aliens on the back. Hey, we just do it like this. Yeah, and I don't they'll doubt it. I'm shy guy. Go with me. But you know what? I ain't worried about Washington, D.C. I got to worry about my wife. Why? Because my wife lives with me. And I got to worry about my household. Why? I am in charge of it. And God called me back down here, drug me out of sticking in Arkansas, almost killed me, man. Took my job from me, got me in the darkest place I've ever been in my life. And boy, when you're in a dark place, any little bit of light is, is comfort. And Lord, just light a little match for me. Look, that's good. He said, well, come on. Okay. And boy, I was like getting saved again. Say, God would never do that because God is love. Right. And God's not a pervert. So the other side of love is wrath. And he's going he gonna to pull out that level of discipline. Matter of fact, the Bible is full of the way God deals with people like yourselves. Yeah, look at uh, Hebrews. I live Hebrews 12. So what are we talking about? Uh, let's see, we got to get up. We're going to say uh, it's Wednesday night, church services, Christians, right? This is called Christian. So we'll talk to Christians. Say, well, why why don't we worry about John 3.16? Because I'm thinking you are all saved. 
So most Christians, so most churches tonight, if they are not, if they even have a service, they'll be in the, the Gospels. We're past the cross, brother. We're looking for the rapture. We're looking to, for heaven. We're looking to, to the judgment seat of Christ. We want to know what's applicable. See? Hey, that, I warn you, there's a judgment seat coming. And there's a reason why Lord sends people your way to tell you what he's telling you, man. And you pretend like it ain't applicable to you. All right. Well, you know, to each his own. Look at verse 1, Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. That's probably all those guys, all those people that are listed in chapter 11. But if it isn't, or if it's if it's just a witness in general, it would be not only is it though that crew in, in Hebrews 11, it's everybody that's in your circle. I'll read that again. Wherefore, seeing we, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. So people, let me ask you this. Yeah, that's not applicable to us. Yeah, all right, well, let me ask you like this there, Mr. Scholar. People know you're saved? Yes, they're watching you. Well, I never asked to be a role model, you know. You didn't have to ask. You're, you're an ambassador. You are called, you're a new creature, and that is your role, and Jesus Christ took a beating, and you said yes. And when you said yes, you probably not used to reading small print and things, right? And so when you read that print, it ain't small. It's just it's there for the taking if you want to read, but you just don't put yourself in a position these days. It's better just to watch a TV show than have to sit down and read a Bible. And you want to read books about the Bible. You want to hear things about the Bible, but you don't want the Bible. Read the Bible. And that way, you're, you, you're around people to talk about the Bible. You can pick out whether or not John, Steve, Eddie, Susie, or whoever else knows what they're talking about because today, the last days, perilous times, that crew of Christians, the Laodiceans, boy, they're rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. They don't need your church. They don't need that Bible. They don't need sound doctrine. There's a time where they won't endure sound doctrine. So that's coming. No, no, that's here. That's why you're at the, at the spot you're at as a country. So I'm looking at these things on YouTube, and it would be like, you know, 19 or whatever, and everybody dresses. These women are all in dresses, all the fellas in suits, and I'm like, where'd that culture go? Where'd that society go? And that's been under attack. That was the end part of the Philadelphia church age, and then now you got Hoochie Mama, Christians, that, that, that uh, the book of Proverbs talks about, they wear the attire of an harlot. So it said, it say she was a heart. I, I preached that to my kids one time, and they just flipped. <gasps> you just said every girl's a heart in? I said, no. And that, neither did that. It said you, you had the attire of one. It didn't say you were, but if you're not, well, why dress like one then? See? God will help you. Get, get, let God, get, you know, oh, I... I'm a Christian. You are. How'd you do that? I gave my heart to Jesus. Well, that ain't in the Bible. Amen. Say, well, we're, we're, you believe easy believeism? Absolutely. God said, so, yeah, that's why he loved you. That's, he made it easy. He did all the hard part. But you still got to receive. That's in the Bible. Believe on. That's in the Bible. So if you're saved, for as many as received into them, gave he the power to become sons of God, even then believe on his name. You receive Christ as your personal Savior. After you get saved, then give him your heart. Well, I'm saved because I walk with Jesus. Well, I decided to follow Jesus back in. Did you get saved first? Because you got to be born again first. Then walk with him. You ain't walking with him without being saved. And, and oftentimes they are saved. They, they're just, they're, they're, their pastors ain't worth shooting. And their terminology, they just got this psychological, psychology, pseudo psycho babble stuff that goes on in churches today. And nobody wants to say hell. That's why they take it out of all the new Bibles. Hades, Sheol, nonsense. Nobody, nobody in Dade County says it's hot as Hades out here. It's hot as the grave. It's hot as the grave, man. <laughs> It's hot as Sheol. Go to Sheol, bro. You and your, the horse you ran in, came in on and all that. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a 
cloud of witness, let's, uh, let us rather, let us. See, you ain't the only one that struggle with the old nature. So we don't like hearing you. And I know, and I don't like hearing you. So, you know, we're in the same boat, right? So the Holy Spirit of God will mend that fence. He'll help us with that. He'll help us with our nonsense, amen? This childish behavior, right? When I was a child, I... Uh, I when I became a man, when I became a Christian man, I put away childish things. And what a little kid will do, he'll just make every, all stink in the world and over-exaggerate everything when he doesn't get his way. And today, mom and dad, they're just, oh, my God, Junior, whatever. Oh, uh, we can't go anywhere. Everybody stay home. And meanwhile, you're just going to hand them something while you go back on that television set. Oh, okay. I uh, couldn't possibly bring them to church. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every way the sin which so look at that, so easily besets us. Don't, don't you find it interesting how easy it is for you not to do for God? How easy it is, man, for you just to stop and quit on God? It's a fight. I get it. It's hot out. I get it. I wasn't born. I was born at night, not last night. I'm with you. I get it. God's giving us a good thing here. And souls are getting saved. If it wasn't, and, you know, I, I would say, you know what, man? It's, let's just agree to, to, to shut the doors and, and move on and let's just stay home. You stay home. All the rest of the churches are just meeting once a week anyway for one service. As long as you put money in the plate, man, I'll just back out and do that. We'll just dial it all back. But there ain't no way I, I can't do that. I, we'll keep going. Whether we call it Victory Baptist or I'll call it Bible Baptist. I don't know. We'll, we're going to keep preaching. See, that's what my point. We're going to keep moving forward for God. And we would like to say, hey, man, whatever that sin is, it so easily besets you. Why don't you ask God to show it to you and give you the grace to stomp it? And whatever that weight is keeping you from running your race, sir, Sister, why don't you ask God for some help finally instead of coddling your wickedness and your foolishness. And Christians are just coddling their wickedness and making just, uh, Jared had sent me, see, Jared, you don't know Jared. He don't say nothing. Those are the ones you got to watch out for, by the way. But on, on that thread there, that dude, dude, he's taken over, man, put a filter on that. And he's got some funny things on that. I'm like, that's funny. And I do these little, I figured out a thing a while back how to do these little movies, little snippets. And I said, I don't use that one. And that one he had that I used tonight, he got a he got a, a a file cabinet with excuses on it and somebody flipping through it. And I said, Yeah, that's that's Christian. So I I, I met a guy online and I asked him, I said, Hey, how do you get that little how do you get the part of that movie on there, man? He says, Oh, you could just screenshot it, you know, you could capture it. How do you do that? He says, well, if you take your phone and do that. <gasps> Look at that. Got all sorts of things on this phone, man. And he said, there'd be a little circle there with another little circle in it. Push it. <gasps> and it's recording all the sound and everything's on the screen. So I figured out how to find something. And, but some of those, you try to record something, they, they know how not to let you do that. But most of it, they're lazy. They, they you get recording sound. I get machine gun sounds, all sorts of cool things, helicopters, napalm. I put a little guy reading the Bible, you know, in the background. You got a, you know, the, the, the Stuka dive bomb. You know. They're like, wow, man. That's... Those excuses ain't going to help you. They, you. See, what happens is it's uh, the, 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 the bread of deceit, right? It's sweet for a season. That's how it goes, and then it's like a mouthful of what? No, mouthful of rocks or whatever. See what happens is when when you refuse to do what it is God's having you do, whatever it is, you say no. Now you get this relief, this endorphin burst from the flesh to say, "Oh, good, we don't have to do that." You know, tomorrow comes before you blink, man. It's like some of you, you know, be like, well, man, you know, uh, Asher and uh, Alex, they've been gone for it. Yeah, but I, they're here. So what about all them days? 
it's over. I don't know. We'll pray for their dog. You know, may Lord bring her back the dog and then go back up to Georgia. Do you think? Everybody goes through stuff, man. The idea is that, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't turn back the time. You can't turn back the hands of time to redo anything. All you can do is keep moving forward. Learn from your mistakes if you're making them. And then let's, let's just be smart about it and say, well, we ain't doing that again, right? And whatever that sin is, when Paul gets to the point where he says, you know, I ain't ashamed of the gospel. Man. I ain't ashamed. I bet he started off. He saw what, what they did to Stephen, remember? Yeah. He was right there. A lot of you Christians, man, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're like, okay, God's called me to do a certain song, but I've seen when brothers do that, they get fired. See, I can't see myself being in the position where God would move me from one side to another. Well, you got, you know, Deuteronomy, man, it, 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 a lot of Bible, a lot of examples, the Lord said, and then we moved them. That's how it works. Okay, we're here for a while, and then God moved them. And then God's going to set you up and help you out. And then if you just learn to trust in God, then there are going to be a lot of things you're doing that you will be doing. Maybe even now you've started and if you just were to look back a year ago, wow, this Rich Barnett, he wasn't even close to thinking that way. But wow, he's thinking it this way now. And there was no way that guy would do what he did. Now he's preaching on the street. Yeah. What happened? From here to here, what happened? Well, you've acknowledged the, 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 the great compass, right? The compass of cloud, great cloud witnesses. And somewhere you started to learn how to lay aside every weight. And sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. Well, how do we do that race? Look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So did Jesus Christ fulfill his God's will when he came? Yes. You could do it. Oh, but I don't. See, there you go again. You back up in the verse 1 again. Now you got the weight and you got the sin. And it's interesting because it's not that it takes anything to stop you these days. It says that so easily besets us. I'm tired. Who's not tired? Well, I'm a little nervous about it. Who doesn't get nervous? You know, the definition of courage isn't that, that you don't get nervous. It's that in spite of your fear, you do it anyway. And you'll be surprised how many times in your life God Almighty is right there watching you, man. And he's just waiting for you to take the first step, and then, then he's going to give you that peace that passes all understanding, but you simply won't get up out of your bed. So now you're in the book of Proverbs, maybe or maybe not, probably not, but it says consider the ant. So oh, you can't be a lazy old bum, because look at the car you drive. And he's talking about your car. Let's talk about serving God. Let's talk about, you know what, man, enough of this foolishness. You know, you got to get to the point in your Christianity where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, man. You constantly just present garbage to God. You're supposed to present yourself a living sacrifice. You're supposed to be pleasing in the eyes of God. How do I do that, Pastor? I give money. Money ain't it. You think God needs your money? Why do you give money? Because So that you, know, you can make up for all your inadequacies? You know, you just write a check for it. I don't need your money, man. This church don't need your money. Probably not getting your money. Thank God, you're supposed to you're supposed to cough up your first fruits, man, because you love God. I learned that years ago. It's like, man, what do I gotta do? Well, how come the government takes thirty and forty percent, and then they double dip, and now they take it all out of here before you get it to the bank, and then I go to the store and they do it again. Now I got homeowners association stuff. What the heck, man? They go eight, four, five times into that wallet, and you just sit there on your television, man, binge watch on Netflix, and don't think twice about it. But God say, hey, why don't you give me that 10% off that top right there? Give me 10% of your time. Abraham did it before the law. I know everybody go to law. Oh, my ass on the law. <laughs> Look, man, I know probably about as much Bible as you do. I should. Why, why listen to a guy that just making stuff up? I mean, I make up quite a bit. But anyway, you don't know that I don't. You don't know that I don't. You don't read your Bible. So it sounds like, oh, that guy's really good. Yeah, I just throw in a few jokes, you know, pretend like I lost my message, and then pow. Verse 2, 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, look, he did. I, he endured the cross. Paul said, I ain't ashamed. Lord, I got it. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And he said, oh, there are plenty of examples in the Bible. Yeah. Are there examples like that and people that got put in your life? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Been there, done that. Look at the t-shirt they wear. They got it. They've been there. They've had to move. They did it. They, 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 they learn how to dig. They learn how to get. See, I look at it like this. So since the Bible is liking our, our, our Christianity unto this battle, right? You know, war, good warfare and all that stuff. Then, then it must be that there's a trench involved. So every time I'm looking for, for inspiration to do things, to post things and stuff, I'm constantly going towards whatever God calls it in the book. And then I look it up on Google Image or something, and he says, War of Good Warfare. Okay, let me... T -t 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 War. World War I. Nostalgic kind of the Zeppelin coming over and whatever. And there's the biplane guy and, and Von Richthofen guy, the Red Baron. And I said, how does that apply to me? And here's a scene of these English soldiers in a trench. And the one dude that's leading them, and I thought, well, there you go. That, that would be what you're doing. And you say, hey, fellas, and you would say life on it. And you would say, hey, guys, because they're about to jump out the trench. And you're looking back telling them, telling you, don't forget Jesus. Bring them with you. We got to go that way, fellas. I'll lead by example. I won't have you do anything I don't do. Right? That's a good leader. I'm cool. You want to knock doors? I'll go knock doors with you. I mean, I, we got enough going on. You want to do more than that? Well, let me hear what you got. But if we do it, you going to show up, though? See? Oh, no. Show hurt. Nail. Dog sick. See, I already know Christians. I know me. So that, 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 that weight. The weight. The weight. You're supposed to run the race. You're supposed to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. You know I don't have to worry about anything like that. I don't have to worry about eternity because he's the author and finisher. But where is Jesus Christ? He's in me. And where are you? Uh, I'm in him. Oh, oh, you're one of them once saved, always saved. I'm a Bible believer. Don't pigeonhole me, flat earther guy or whatever and all this stuff and this. And what are you? Are you, a, are you a King James only guy? No, I'm a Bible believer. I thought you Christians were supposed to believe the Bible. And they're like, every Christian is a Bible believer. All the Christians believe Bibles. Well, first, sir, I know they don't read them. So how do you, really, how do you believe something you don't read? And if by chance you are one of the few that actually crack the thing open, you don't do anything in it. So how, again, are you that Bible believer guy? See? And if you learn to do that, it's like how you learn to speak English. Learn how to add, learn how to multiply, learn how to read. See, in America, I tell all our kids, ready? If you're not lazy, you could read and you want to do right, you, you do right, you could do anything you want. You're not lazy, you got to learn how to read, and you got to want to do right. Then you can do whatever you want to do. In this country, you can. But what you love doing is making all the excuses why you make look God, making God look bad. Why are you making God? Why are you giving the enemies of God great occasion to blaspheme? Because you're the one that said you're the Christian. You came in there one day because you're feeling right. You finally were on a, you finally had that walk going for a week. And people took notice of the fact you're actually showing up on time. You're actually doing something for a change. And oh, you even got gospel checks. You try to leave around the, the lounge or the break room. Aha! We know who that guy is. And then when your adrenaline goes down, hey man, your coffee high, you come down off that, that caffeine high. And all of a sudden, you're late and you're talking trash about the boss. And, you know, then those familiar words start popping out of your mouth. Don't you, don't you worry. They noted that. They made note of that. And you're going to be just like stinking lot when you're going to pound it on somebody's door because all of a sudden, you know Jesus has come back and your neighbor, he ain't saved. And he's going to look at you as one that mocketh. That's what the Bible says. Hey, I don't. I don't want you to know that I gave you a track, and I'm gonna give you another one. You say, "Thank you." I don't want it. Okay, you could say that, but you know, don't come back on me. Talk about well, he never told me. I did tell you. I I I don't worry about that. I I I don't I don't. I've 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 gone past. I got past the whole. Well, what happens if that Bible cut? What happens? If all your effort comes back void. It doesn't. 
You say, well, how do you know that? How come you keep passing out those hundreds and hundreds of tracks every other week? You'd be surprised how many tracks this church gives up. So you might not know that. You might think that the only people that are ministered are the ones that show up once in a while. No, we, we, ain't, we ain't limited ourselves to this little room here because that's, that's not what God told us to do. He told us eventually get out to the uttermost parts of the world. Correct? So we're looking at ways to get the word out. Now, you don't want to show up. Don't think for a second like most churches. Everything that, 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 that we do stays within these four walls. That is not true. That ain't how anybody in that Bible does it. They just keep preaching, keep going, and keep moving, more doing. We say that. Dun, 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 dun. But you know, you gotta want to do that. There's a weight right now that's keeping you from making that move. What you waiting on, man? You know how many times you hear that? I bet all our messages sound like Charlie Brown's teacher to you. There he goes again. Yeah, but you haven't done it the first three years. You know, I get on Facebook, and, and when I'm on Facebook, and it tell you, oh, memories. Ah, 2019. Do right. Show up. Stop being a punk. Oh, 2020. Read your Bible. Forsake not the assembling. 2021. Be a man. Bring your family. Do right. Do right. War good warfare. Every single one. See you at the old church. O, o L E. See you at the old church. You know why I say that? Every single time. It could be your prompt or your indictment. See, man, well, man, we were in victory battle. He never told us to do nothing. Lord, you got Facebook on that? You know how to tap into Facebook? I don't need a phone for that. Well, pull up anything that's been posted. Anything. Well, this one here is like a little kid that got eaten by a squirrel. I asked, well, every once in a while, it's funny. Okay, but keep going, scrolling, you'll see. Do right, man. Got the soldier coming out, got the plane coming out, kind of go do, do. Got the old man reading the Bible, got the young lady reading the Bible, got the young man, got the kids and the family reading the Bible. There's so many pictures out, so many illustrations, man, to get your get your blessed shirt and gear. And you got all the examples that you want. You're 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 not only surrounded by this great cloud of witness, it's not only just the unsaved people, it's the everybody else that those witnesses can also be a great utilization. A great source for you. Because you got to have something in there somewhere that says, you know, man, that dude can do it. Why not? If that guy can do it, I can do that. Who's he? Lord says, you got me. Well, if you got me, who else do you need? Ask David about that. David tell you. They recovered all. You can make mistakes. I got it. We all make mistakes. What you gonna do about it? Oh, nothing. It is nothing. It's just, it's just, we're going to watch YouTube. And yeah, YouTube. When Gene Kim comes down here, we're gonna have him come to my house. He ain't coming to church. He's coming to my house. That means that we're gonna everybody and their mother want to come and take a picture with Gene Kim at our church. He won't be in this. He'll be in my house. That means you got to get a code to get in. But well, we want to come up. Well, I hadn't seen you in three months, man. I hadn't seen you in half a year, man. But you want to show up, get your picture with Gene Kim, huh? You got to come to my house. And you got to call me. I got to let you in. And my wife's got her little book that she writes your name in on it. And she's like, hey, honey, it's uh, so-and-so here. Wait, what do we got? He goes, oh, we hadn't seen him, honey. I don't, I don't think he's not going to be good for this. It's green. It's a, it's a, it's, she stole it from the church, from the school. I mean, not stole it, I'm sure. Of course not. Hey, Amen. What doesn't hurt, doesn't, what doesn't, what is it, doesn't kill you, makes you strong. All right, verse two, let's close. We'll go down to four. Looking unto Jesus, the author and our finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Your day of sitting down with God is coming. It's right around the corner. You say, how you know? Perilous time, last days. Well, how you know? You, Christians, 
When I look at you, you don't show up. I'm like, twisted, huh? But I know that's more evidence that we're in the last days. Know this also in the last days, the scoffers will come. See? Well, where's the guy? Oh, I'm waiting for the coming of our us all we ever hear. I heard that. All right. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Sorry, so and so. You just give me fuel for the fire. Thank you, Lord. It sounds twisted, right? Because you're not in your Bible. It sounds twisted because you got this thing, thing kind of turned around thinking that I should be the center of everything. And I, when I'm ready, I when I, right? It's the ghost. It, it's simple Bible, it really is. It used to be said that this King James Bible was written at a fourth grade level. Well, that was before 2023. This is probably uh, doctorate level English now. Because I know what's out there. Yeah, it's just the uh, Ebonics. We got to honor the Ebonics. Ebonics? No, you don't have to honor that. And then all across America, they're, they're doing social advancement to all these kids. So you got high school graduates with the diploma, can't read. He teaches. I taught. I saw him. I was one of them. <laughs> it took me a little past the summer to get mine, but... Matter of fact, that thing they give you when you take a picture is a blank piece of paper. Or maybe it was just mine because I had to go to summer school. But anyway, I'm joining the Navy. You got to let me go. So why didn't you do all that stuff before? Uh, there's a Van Halen concert, and, you know. Anyway, your day to come, your day to sit down at the right hand of the throne of God, that day of being with Jesus Christ coming, what are you going to do then? What you gonna do when you see this guy, Jesus Christ, this guy you say you follow? The, the time to do something for him is now, right? Why you why you tired and go on? Why you sleepy and go on? Why you gotta drive for whatever you're driving from? Ten buck two. I saw your boy's a Bible believer now, Mr. Parrothead. Margaritaville guy. He knows that Bible's true now. Jimmy Buffett. He knows all about the Bible now. And I guarantee you, man, God makes sure when he starts talking about the visible things are clearly seen and they just didn't like to retain God in the knowledge, Romans chapter 1, they'll be without excuse. And Jimmy Buffett knows better out of however many times he heard the word of God when he was growing up. And he said, I ain't got time for it, just like a typical Christian. You want to know why so many people, man, you can't figure out why nobody's getting saved no more. Well, why were people like, well, so where, where, who's talking to them? Well, I mean, not me, but somebody's going to talk to them about Jesus Christ, right? Well, they got to use the people. May you call if you were chosen. The, the fields are wide on the harvest. Is that what the Bible says? But what's the problem then? Can't get nobody to harvest. Laborers can't find them. Sick, kids sick. Sorry, can't, can't do that, Pastor. We are. But we'll see you eventually. Yeah, you're darn right. We'll see you eventually. But I'd rather see you here than have to meet you while you're bouncing off Pluto and stuff, man. You'd be like, well, where'd they go? Well, we all meet in heaven. Every one of us. Whether you show up to church or not, whether you made Jesus Christ a priority in your life or not, you and me are going to spend eternity together. <laughs> okay, it's crazy, right? You say, I, with you? Yeah, and I'm like, with you? And Lord said, yeah, we're going to have glorified bodies burning. Don't worry about it. Be, we'll all be good. All right. When we all get to heaven. Right. There you go. When we all get to heaven. Verse 3, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. You know how much of your problems right here? I can't. I can't do it, Pastor. I can't do it. I just I just tell you, I cannot be out in that street corner pass down tracks like that. I cannot show up to church. You, you meet too much. You meet twice a week. You know, man, you live an hour away. Your church house is an hour away. I only do that for the job. You know, on vacation when I drive my kids all the way to the Grand Canyon. You know, God God gave me a church right up the road, man. And then when it wasn't here, 
I drove to Pope two and a half hours one way. And the Lord, as a result of that level of faithfulness, I guess, he rewarded me with another church right here. Well, you fine folk. And your church was hanging on by a thread. Amen. Amen. And amen. See, what you're not understanding, you better thank God for a little Bible believing word like this. I said like we were in the trenches. Your whole deal here should be like knowing that you're in a trench. This trench network of yours, if you ever studied trench warfare in World War I, it all connects us to the supply depot, but they're in the trenches. Where the ammunition is, where the food's at, where the soldiers sleep, they're all connected by these trenches. There should be a trench from this church house to your house. What you do, you ain't no trench going nowhere. You're just out there in no man's land making a lot of noise. And the enemy's picking you off. Pow, 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 pow. What happens when the barrage starts? Where are you? Way out over there. Out of place. Get your kids. They'll get your kids, man. Are you crazy? How do you not know that? You get your wife. Get your husband. Say, come on in here to the garrison, man. Little, this is all this is. This is a view. A few people gathered up in Dade County talking about a holy Bible, little stuff in here about a race. Didn't even have the note, can't find the notes. Don't know how to know. Ah, God. Evidently, God wanted you to hear that. But he done stole my notes. <laughs> so I never seen that before. But that's all right. I don't need notes. I can do this. I can preach. Make it sound like I know. Verse 4, we'll close. This, this Bible points its finger at, at us a lot. Thou art a man. Wow, my goodness, who did that? You did it. Oh, I ain't never coming back again. It, that Bible, that man was preaching that the, the wives got to submit themselves to their husbands. The audacity of that man. Well, what does it say, Susie Q? Well, well, but still, that's not what the original said. And if God uses donkeys, surely he can use girl preachers. What are you getting at? Stuff? That's one of the questions. Well, them guys are they was like, hey, cool. what's the reasoning behind that? Well, God used a donkey. He could use girls. He didn't understand what you just talked till said about the girls there. He just called them donkeys. So anyway, that's I guess he got that problem with his wife over there. Verse 4, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against your number one issue in this life. <laughs> right underneath it, it just popped up. How many times did I have this in my hand and it just popped up? All right, so some of you, some of you, man, got some decisions to make. I better not put it in there. How'd that happen, Lord? That happens, man. Gave me goosebumps just now. Or oh, actually, because it's cold. All right, one of those, one of some. So you got a good God. You all right? You ain't as bad as you think. It's that warfare in that mind. You got to pull down some of them strongholds, man. That always keep leave leave you as a, a perpetual defeatist. Everything is oh, everything's overwhelming. Everything, though, man. How about you go home tonight and you write the last five notable victories in your life that God was a part of. And you don't have to bring it back. You just email them. No, you don't have to bring it back. Just do something with God and say, hey, Lord, let me learn how to count my blessings. And I want to see you show me, Lord, the last five times you intervened in my life. I, I, if, you, you, if you got a problem with finding five within the next 30 seconds... Man, you got some work to do, but you can. Your whole life is him because of him. With, all, with him, all, by him, all things consist. Every little cell in your body is because of Jesus Christ. And all he asks for is a little bit of acknowledgement. He knows you're sorry. He knows we're sorry. Nothing's, we're saved by grace. It's a gift, not a works, lest any man should boast. That's our that God. Lord knows who he's dealing with. He said, let me, let me help fix that. You fix my wife? I can't fix my wife. I, I stopped trying years ago. I figured I'm the man. I'm going to fix that. I said, I'll fix her. 
wife says, I'm going to fix my husband. I'll tell him. Sister, don't you do it. He ain't going to let you do that. You let God fix your man. And then let God raise the two of you so you can raise them kids so that your kids are a joy to be around. Look, uh, look, little, if your kids wear you out today, mark this down. They're going to wear out everybody else when they grow up. If your kids are wearing you out today, they're going to grow up bigger. And they're going to get stronger and more bolder, and they're going to be wearing other people out. And that, that ain't how you work. That ain't what I said. Yeah. Kids are a burden, and we should go to the abortion clinic. That's not what I said. That's a joy, man. The fruit of the, the womb is God's reward. But they ain't looking like it. Because you, you want some, so many. So many click. Father, bless tonight. Thank you for it. Thank you for being good to us. You are great to us. Thank you for the people who came out tonight. Lord, bless them for coming. Lord, there are people here that, that uh, have driven quite a ways, actually. But uh, I guess that's just life, though. And, uh, I mean, it's been done. It can be done. With God, all things are possible. And if we can drive to Orlando, we can drive to the port to get on a cruise and Go overseas and take vacations to see, I don't know, the Grand Canyon. Why we can't make it to the church house? Why can't we do that? Why can't we be faithful in the little things? So we love and thank you. Lord, you are uh, you're everything. And we are looking forward to your return. Come snatch us up out of here. Until that time, help us be found faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. You see that, man? That thing was right underneath the Bible. It's, I took the Bible and did this, and it wasn't there. Or was it? Did you have your glasses on, Pastor? No.